Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're talking Arvada. Arvada is a great little city in the Denver metro area. So if you've been thinking about moving here and you're wondering about Arvada or you're thinking of relocating around the Denver metro area and just want to know a bit more about what makes Arvada such a great city, you're going to want to tune into this video. And we're going to go over everything that you want to know. The lifestyle, affordability, of course, it's real estate, it's schools. And we're also going to compare Arvada to the rest of the Denver metro cities, kind of see how it stacks up if you're thinking about actually moving here. So what's the appeal and why do people want to live in Arvada and what makes it such a cool little town? Well, it's on the western side of the Denver metro area, so it automatically puts you close to the foothills. And Arvada has one of likely three downtown areas that I would put on kind of my hallmarky list, right? I joke about it all the time, but kind of hallmark at Christmas. Um, it just has a place in my heart and Arvada fits that bill. It's downtown area is really cute. Uh, it's similar to Littleton's, not as big, uh, similar to Parker's as well. And those are really your suburbs around town that give you your own little downtown feeling in addition to all the rest of the shopping and restaurants and stuff like that that you would have scattered throughout the rest of the town. But that's really one of the big appeals to it. And then the proximity to the foothills, right? Just to your west, a um, few minute drive. And even the borders of Arvada do butt up against the foothills there. You've got more horse properties, more bigger properties with some acreage on the western and the northern part. Real easy to get around up to Boulder, down to Golden, skiing. Like that's what the appeal to Arvada is. So, starting off with where is Arvada, location, commute times, things like that. Well, as I said, it's located on the western part of the Denver metro area, just north of I 70, south of 36, and it butts up against the foothills. So, when you look at getting around Arvada, depending on how far you've got to go, Going north to south, you have Wadsworth, which is 121. That's going to get you most of your north and south routes, depending on if you've got to go down to Lakewood um, or even down to Route 6, which will get you over into Denver. Now, just to the south, you have I-70. Okay? So I-70 is going to be your main highway going east to west. So if you're going to end up going up to the foothills or the mountains, you're probably going to hop on I-70. Likewise, to go to Denver, I-70 is your route. And then you have I-76 that kind of branches off of I-70. 70 just south of Arvada and that'll get you more into the northeastern burbs um, along with DIA. So commute time. So if you were in the heart of Arvada and you had to get to downtown Denver, you're looking at about a 22 minute drive. Now, if you got to head over to DIA to catch a flight out of town, you've got a few different options here. You got about 35 minutes with most traffic kind of heading to the northern part of DIA or you can head through I-70, I-76 uh, and you're looking at about a 40 to 45 minute drive even with traffic. And if you work down in the tech center, you're going to be looking at about a 35 to 45 minute drive with traffic on most days. And then if you're looking to head out skiing, Heading over to Breckenridge, hour and a half to two hours. You hear me talk about this on every single video. Depends on what time you leave on the weekends. Weekdays, hour and a half, hour 45, you're totally solid. On the weekends, if you leave after about 6 a.m., you're probably looking at two and a half to three hours. Or you can head up to Eldora, which is just west of Boulder in Netherland, and you're going to be looking at about an hour drive there. So Eldora is becoming more and more popular as the I-70 corridor is getting more and more slammed with traffic on the weekends. So might be a good choice for you to head up to Eldora. But the overall average commute time, if you live in Arvada, is 27 minutes. Now, Arvada's population has been driving a lot of the increase in prices in Arvada. It's, it's no surprise that real estate all across the country has doubled or even tripled in some places over the last 10 years, 15 years or so. And Arvada is no difference. However, it's a little bit more hyper than some of the other locations around Denver than say Aurora or even Littleton. Littleton's had some great growth, but over the last 10 years, Arvada's population has increased by about 20%, going from about 100,000 in 2014 up to over 120,000 here in 2024. So with that, you have increasing prices. So we can see here the median sales price in 2024 is about 640. Now, it's not uncommon that most of the suburbs around Denver have appreciated by more than 100% in the last decade. Back in 2014, Arvada was sitting at about 270. So we are well more than 100%. 100% would be 540,000. We're at 640. So we're almost at 150, 170% increase over the last decade, which 
is quite a bit more than the other suburbs around the Denver area. You know, it's been built out for a while. You have a lot of really cool homes in Arvada. You have some mid-century moderns. You've got some newer builds that are 4,000 plus square feet. And then to the western side, you have, you know, houses with incredible views of the foothills, some horse properties. Like you have this great mix of real estate. And we can talk about numbers all day long, but we're going to look at what you can actually buy in Arvada today for that median price. But we're also going to show you some more inexpensive stuff, you know, townhomes, condos. And then we're going to show you some really nice multi-million dollar homes here in a second. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Alex Saldani. I've been a local Denver real estate agent since 2010. And I love answering your questions. So feel free, reach out, give me a call, shoot me a text message with any questions you have about Arvada or any other towns around the Denver metro area. Now, without further ado, Let's take a look at what you can actually buy today in Arvada. told you Arvada has some incredible properties there. Now, what you just saw, by the time you see this video, is probably not going to be on the market anymore. I mean, the average time on market in Denver, the whole metro area is about two weeks right now. So what I'll have is a link in the description below that you can click on that you can look at your preferred list of Arvada homes. You can get those delivered to your inbox every day if you want. So now what about everything else in Arvada? It's lifestyle, there's schools. Well, this is where I love to head over to niche.com and I'll even have a link in the description below for you that you can check this out and dig into it much further. But we're gonna check out its entire report card here. And overall, as we can see, Arvada on niche.com gets a rate of an A minus, which is not uncommon for the Denver suburbs. We're at an incredible quality of life. You know, yes, we are a bit more expensive, but proximity to everything between hiking, golfing, skiing, mountain biking, like it's just second to none. So we all rate pretty darn high. Going down this list, B plus for public schools, C plus for housing, because we're just more expensive. Um, so we get dinged for that. But if you want the great quality of life, yeah, you got to pay for it. B minus for jobs. A little surprised at that. The Denver market is pretty hot for the job market right now, especially on contractors. Uh, we have an extreme shortage of any skilled labor force there. So a little bit surprised that we got a rating for that. C for cost of living. We are high on the cost of living side of things. A for outdoor activities. I mean, as far as hiking and biking and all that, we'll go over some locations here in a minute, but it's literally all right outside your back door. C plus for crime and safety. Well, we have a lot of vehicle thefts here in the Denver metro area for whatever reason. When I get to the bottom of it, I will be the first to let you know why. We are very low in violent crimes, but for some reason, we just have a lot of car thefts. A minus for nightlife. You know, it gets ranked pretty good here with the downtown Arvada, old town Arvada, where you do have a number of restaurants and bars that are going to be open late. Like Arvada is a cool little town to hang out in. B plus for diversity, B plus for weather, which you hear me harp on this. We have the best weather in the world here. Um, I'm a firm believer of it. I'm from the Midwest originally from Chicago. And, you know, I know hot gets hot. 90s is just stifling humidity in the 80%, 90%. When it's 90 degrees here, our humidity 
might be in the single digits, but more realistically, it's about 10 to 15%. So it's super low. So it doesn't feel nearly as hot. And same with the cold, like 30 degrees here is still just sweater weather. Um, the best weather in the world, all four seasons here and four remarkable seasons. A minus for health and fitness. Like, we're just an extremely healthy city overall, like many of the other cities around the Denver metro area, so we rank really good there. And then B for commute. And now if you want to get rid of my biased opinion of Arvada and how good of a town it is, you can just head into the reviews over on niche.com and see what people that are living there are actually saying about the city. So what about parks, trails, open space? Well, the city of Arvada, within its limits, manages 4,200 acres parks and open space. More than 90 parks and 96% of residents are within a 10 minute walk of one of their parks. So where are some of our favorite spots to go to in Arvada? Well, starting on the western side of town, you have Long Lake Regional Park. This place is huge. And if you love flying kites, man, right against the foothills, these parks are phenomenal. There's usually a low light breeze constantly blowing. So it's almost near impossible to not get a kite off the ground. This place is huge. And then of course there's Ralston Valley Park, which is kind of in the middle of town there, but it connects to miles of trails, both east and west. And I gotta say the Denver metro area is really good about making these elongated trails that go for 20, 30 miles throughout the Denver metro area. And access to part of it is right here in Ralston Park, where you can go west almost all the way to the foothills and east pretty much all the way to Denver. And then if the weather's crappy outside or you got a snowy day, you can always head over to the Apex Rec Center. This place is awesome. We go there all the way from South Denver uh, on rainy or snowy days. If we want to hit a water park, it's got a full indoor water park with a couple of slides, a small lazy river, like such a great facility to just go hang out. They've got a climbing gym in there, full gym. Like this place is a real legit rec center. And if you're looking to head out hiking, you can just head directly west. And depending on where you're at in Arvada, it might only take you a few minutes to get to the White Park Ranch East Trailhead, which is a phenomenal place right in the foothills there. Super easy to get to. So now how about the schools in Arvada? Well, you've got some great options here. You're in Jefferson County. Jefferson County is a highly regarded school district around the Denver metro area. And then, you know, the elementary schools without getting into the charter schools or private schools or anything like that are rated pretty darn well. So here we've got a list of Denison, Three Creeks, and Jefferson County Open Elementary School, all rated A and B plus and B plus, just really good elementary schools. Then as far as the middle schools go, we have D. Evelyn, which is a junior high slash high school, rates really, really strong. And we've got Manning Option School as well as Three Creeks Elementary, which also feeds into, it's a K through eight. Uh, so you get your middle school experience there as well. So then as far as high schools go, you have D. Evelyn, which is rated extremely high. And then you have Longview High School, not rated nearly as strong though as D. Evelyn. So now how about the affordability in Arvada? Well, we've already looked at some of the real estate prices, right? And our median price sitting at 640,000. Let's pull out our mortgage calculator and kind of see how that shakes out. So taking the standard approach of putting 20% down on 640,000, assuming a 7% mortgage interest rate today. Now this is where property taxes really help out, right? We have very low property taxes. So about half of a percent of your property's value in property taxes per year. So a little bit over three grand for our example here at 640,000, assuming uh, insurance at about $2,400 a year with 20% down, okay, you're looking at about a $3,800 a month payment. Okay, Now that's with 20% down. Let's look at the minimum here of 5% down for a conventional loan and see what happens. So taking all those same numbers and putting 5% down, so $32,000, which is a much friendlier down payment that a lot more people can actually afford, we're looking at a monthly payment of just about $4,500 a month. So it is not a cheap place to live, but that's pretty much what you're going to find around the Denver metro area. But again, there are some more inexpensive solutions around that 400 to 350 mark or so if you're willing to be in a condo or a townhome. Most single families, you're going to find between that 500 to about 750 range. And then, of course, your horse properties and your 4,000 plus square foot newer built homes are all going to be north of a million. Now, what about the overall affordability outside of just housing? Well, heading over here, we can see on our card, overall, we rank at a 132 where the national average is 100. So about 32% more expensive on average to be in Arvada than you are in the rest of the country. Then 
groceries, we're just a touch above the national average there. Health, we are down quite a bit in health costs because we are a healthier city in general. So our healthcare costs are just that much lower. Housing, 191, so almost 100% more than the national average. Not too dissimilar from most of the Denver metro area. Utilities, we are under the national average by about, at about 95%, so a little bit cheaper here. Transportation, 117, so above the national average. And then miscellaneous, 155 for everything else that goes into our lives. Now, I'm sure while watching this, a question or two has popped up. So call me text me. doesn't matter what time. I'd be happy to help out. And if you found this information valuable, what you're going to want to do is watch this playlist on all the other cities around the Denver metro area laid out just like this so you can make the best decision for you and your family on your move to Denver.